term crackberry was coined during research in motion's heyday referring to the highly addictive blackberry smartphone well now a new uh, term is emerging cracked berry referring to a brand that's broken samit canada is an analyst with northern securities brandon mansinga is a senior analyst with idc canada great to have both of you with us Thank you. Thanks for having us. All right, Samit, let's start with uh, whether it's cracked or not. We certainly saw today after the earnings, investors clearly feeling like it's time to get out of this stock. Uh, what's your take on where RIM stands today? Uh, as clearly as evidence pointed out, it's a transition phase, uh, and we don't see this growth returning for the next 24 months at least. Uh, they've been, we have started to discount whatever management has been telling us because whatever managed, you know, all the products have been delayed, certifications has been delayed, they've missed the important deadline this year. So uh, I'm not even sure they'll meet the $24, million, $24 billion top line, that consensus numbers this year, because there's, there are clearly delays. Uh, certification delays are big. Like, uh, yeah. For anyone that doesn't know, you can't go ahead with that. So I'm not quite sure how do you get from 4.9 in Q1 to 24, 25 billion for the full year when your product's not going to be launched. So uh, we think, hold, hold on. It's going to be a rough ride for another 12, 18 months, and wow. then look at it sometime in next year. Brandon, I mean, you know, when you look at this, uh, the company, I mean, a lot of people, in, uh, you know, have capitulated here. They're thinking it's, it's, you know, the worst, uh, and rims <clears throat> falling down. But, you know, is this a situation of leadership? Is it a situation of technology and research and development? What's the problem really within this? Yeah, I think it's technology and products. So I think what's happened is that there's been a user experience gap between iPhone, Android, and RIM and BlackBerry things. So I think RIM fully understands the problem or the situation that they're in. They have a plan to resolve that problem. I think come next year, uh, this time, that problem should be solved with the QNX based phone that's expected to be released in Q1. So let's talk about that because uh, what people who really believe in the technology at RIM tell me is that right now, you know, we use our phones for Angry Bird or we, you know, we're doing kind of fun <coughs> consumer stuff. It doesn't really matter the deep functionality. QNX runs, you know, nuclear facilities. It's, sure. a, it's a very powerful operating system. And what believers say is that when you're using your handheld to pay your bills or get into your apartment security sure. code, it's going to matter what the security is, what the guts are. It does, and I think that all may be true. The question is, does, is RIM going to be able to deliver in a timely enough way to actually get that consumer market, or will somebody else come in and sweep out from under them? Yeah, for sure, and I think that's the big concern right now. So, I mean, you know, we have a couple quarters to go before that's going to be released, I think, and every release that we have right now is going to be incremental. So over the course of the next two or three quarters, uh, they're going to struggle. They're going to have delays. And they're going to have problems from a volume perspective and I think from a stock perspective. But I think if they can get things together tactically and actually execute for Q1 and actually take that QNX platform and couple it with a fantastic user experience, I think they have a winner on their hands. And the reality is that you know they acquired a company called TAT up in Sweden. And that company, TAT, has uh, great expertise with user experience. And what they're expecting to do is couple TAT with QNX to have this super phone they're expecting in Q1. Sammy, when we, when we talk about sort of their growth projections, I mean, you know, RIM has been powered by a lot of their international growth, emerging market growth. How do you see that shifting in the next uh, 12 to 24 months? Uh, for the, what saved them yesterday was the international growth. And mm -hmm. uh, we clearly see there's pressures, competitive pressures. Uh, everyone seems to forget that there are all these Chinese manufacturers, Taiwanese-based Chinese manufacturers, who are coming up with competing products over there with the ASPs lower than 100 bucks with comparable user experience and those they are getting a lot of traction in those emerging markets so now they, it becomes a low-cost game over there a low price product game over there and yes you get the initial adopters that like the blackberry experience but uh, when you're talking about trying to capture 4 10 15 percent of the market uh, it's a emerging markets is a highly price sensitive market and that again means that ASPs might decline for the next three four quarters depending on the revenue mix if the QNX platform comes out next year, you'll at least have ASP declines till then, and then let's see what the QNX adoption is. Because let's not forget, QNX is at least three-year delayed project. That means they have missed two upgrade cycles. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, I, we make this comparison, we hear this comparison to Nokia. I wonder whether there's a comparison to be made to digital equipment, which hung on to the supercomputer market and uh, let the personal computer market completely get away from them. We're still talking about this handheld that, that Room obviously is masterful <coughs> at. They're tinkering with this. Should they be more engaged in the R&D and the engineering of the next great thing, the way Apple seems to do, looking beyond the current device into something we don't, we don't have in our hands yet? Yeah, so I mean, I think this is where we haven't really recognized what Rim has already done. I think 12 months ago, 18 months ago, 
they recognized the need, and that's why they acquired QNX. That's why they acquired TIT. So I think that stuff has been done. So I think what they're trying to do now is actually execute on what they knew, knew had to be done previously, and now Q1, hopefully next year, we should see that actually transpire, I think. So I think RIM's head is not in the sand. I think they clearly know what's happening, and they yeah. know at least they have a strategy to resolve it. So it's just a matter of can they actually execute in a timely fashion. When you look at the, uh, this technology, I mean, from my perspective, isn't this a valuable asset to buy from a player who wants to be in this competitive uh, industry, who thinks that mobile is going to be the future of this, uh, the markets? I mean, isn't Microsoft a buyer of this? Isn't, I mean, at some point, not at $60 billion, but at $13 billion enterprise value, this is a very attractive asset. Yes, there'd be a lot of buyers, but the shareholding structure, you've got two guys that own 10%, they're co-CEOs, co-chairmans. There's no way, I think personally, there's no way they sell at 26 bucks or even at 50 bucks. Mm -hmm. It was 63, three months ago. Yeah. So you're talking a valuation in excess of $65. Now they own, there's only a handful of companies that have $42 billion in cash lying around or in shares capacity. Microsoft already partnered with Nokia. Google's already partnered with HTC and everyone else on the planet. Uh, who else do you think comes into, into play? H HP, I think they've bought Palm and you know they're trying to make that a go. Uh, not a lot of bidders for RIM right now at this point of time, unless you have some private equity shops and say, okay, let's take a run at this and see what we can do. But uh, I think in pure, I guess, uh, something that makes sense, I think all the players ha are pretty much aligned and RIM's on their own right now. So we got about five seconds. I want to ask both of you, should the co-CEOs resign, one or both of them, Samit? One of them. Which one? We think Mike should be leading the company. Mike should be leading the company. Yes. Jim should go. Uh, Jim can stay. <laughs> <laughs> Brandon? Uh, I think this is overreaction. As with the stock price overreacting, I think people are overreacting to the co-CEO situation as well. So I think as is. All right. Sumit so Canada is an analyst with Northern Securities. Brandon Mansinga, senior analyst for Mobility IDC Canada. Thanks. Okay. Still ahead, the Devil Dumps Prada. Why the fashion line's Hong Kong debut was less than a runway success. That's coming up. First, Asha Tomlinson with the latest news.